<laughs> that was actually really good. Greetings, I am Rob Chappers. And I'm the captain. And we're at Anderton's. We certainly are. These classic. I was going to give it the big breastage thing, but I forgot. I've only got my small logo today. You've only got a small breastage today, but that's fine. We like all kinds of breastage <laughs> here at Anderton's.co.uk. Uh, we've got these Gibson Classic Custom guitars. The Les Paul Classic Custom. Yes. Now, this is new. Um, this is new for sort of autumn, winter 2011. Um, got four funky colours in this guitar. Uh, Going to tell you a little bit about the sort of the features on, on this guitar. Essentially, it's a new design that Gibson have decided to release because of the problems that they've had sourcing rosewood uh, over the sort of summer of 2011. Problem sourcing rosewood? <laughs> on that guitar, are you? I'll promise officer this ain't no rosewood, this is big sure? people! I'll catch <laughs> of his rosewood! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you guys have read or heard pages of stuff about um, the uh, problems that Gibson have got with the Lacey Act in America and, and that they had a, um, all their stocks of rosewood um, confiscated earlier this year, which means that they have uh, been forced to look at alternative uh, fretboards. So, one of the features of this new Les Paul uh, Classic Custom, uh, and one that we're going to uh, focus on quite a lot in this video, uh, is the baked maple Alaskan. fretboard. Yes. The baked Alaskan. The baked maple fretboard. <clears throat> to look at it, you wouldn't, I mean, you wouldn't really know, would you? Do you know what? I, I honestly believe that if Gibson had introduced this new fretboard and not said anything, you wouldn't know. 75, 80% of you would have never known. Yeah. But. It does feel completely different. Yes. Interestingly as well, in fact, just across these three guitars here, and we'll do some close-up later, I've got one here which is quite a light uh, baked maple. Chappers has got one here which is a darker baked maple, looks a bit like more like rosewood. Yeah. And then one of the questions that you guys may all be thinking, oh, can I, can I, can I, can I oil a baked maple fretboard? Because you know you generally can't oil a maple fretboard. Yes, you can, and most lemon oils uh, will darken the fretboard so the black one uh, has been oiled so if you want to get your fretboard looking really dark um, then that's no problem a little pot of two pound lemon oil and you can darken it right up although apparently lemon oil isn't really specifically from lemons is it well we were uh, yes uh, on a on a little faq that gibson sent me uh, where I said to them, can I oil these fretboards? And they said, yes, you can. And also, as a footnote, they said, and by the way, lemon oil is rarely uh, made of lemons or has nothing to do with lemons or something. It's essentially just a, a normal mineral oil uh, with uh, a yellow dye and a lemon scent. <laughs> Cuts together. <laughs> Deliver the line, get lunch. <laughs> Classic Custom has taken several kind of design elements from the Les Paul Custom. So if we start from the top and go down, we've got we've got the Les Paul Custom style headstock with the sort of the bound, the sort of the two little black lines running through the white binding, which is essentially from a custom and and the custom inlay. We've got the block inlays on the fretboard. 
we've got the, the binding with the three kind of black stripes around, uh, around the body, but where it's different to a custom is a custom would be bound on the back as well, so you can see the classic custom isn't. I, don't, I never really saw the point in binding the back. I mean, it's a nice touch and all, but It just like, looks nice, doesn't it? I guess. Yeah. We've got a chambered mahogany body. With but a, I was gonna say, it is still quite weighty though. Yeah. This, uh, I mean, I know it's chambered and all, but my God, that's a, I mean, that's a resonant weighty beast. And then with a maple cap, they're not flame maple caps, so obviously that saves a bit of money as well. Uh, we've got classic 57 humbuckers on here. Um, comes in a nice case. We've got our traditional uh, Grover machine heads on the back. Well, this is the 60s thinner neck, isn't it? Yep, uh, there's no neck option on the classic custom. It's just one sort of, it's, yeah, like, like Chappers are saying, a sort of slightly thinner feeling. I prefer these necks to yeah. the, the 50s necks. Come see Baked Maple close up. So, the three guitars on the back here are all Baked Maple fretboards. And what you can see is the, the, the two, the natural one and the gold top one here, I haven't done anything to these fretboards. So you can see um, the natural difference in the sort of the, the shades of wood uh, that you're going to get when you're using baked maple. So this is quite a light coloured baked maple. And then this is quite a dark coloured baked maple. Over here is one that we've used some lemon oil on. This is ever so easy to apply if you want to make the, uh, your sort of rosewood neck or your baked maple neck look darker. You can buy lemon oil from all good guitar stores. Just put it on with a rag. And then here, the one is a rosewood board. So if you're struggling to see much difference... That's really much um, more patchy, isn't it? Yeah, I think there's a more defined grain in rosewood than there is in maple. Um, there you go. So that's what it looks like. You ready? Let's do Gary Yes Newman. What's his Gary name? Yes no, Brian. Brian Yes Man. Brian, Brian. Brian. Brian Newman. Brian Adams. Adams Yes. Ad yes Adams. Yes Adams. Yes Adams. That's a great name. Come in. Two, three, four. <laughs> three super cool colors we've got a beautiful cream one at the back here um, we've got our classic black which I think now that uh, oh, now that Pablo has uh, oiled the fretboard looks super sleek here uh, Chappers has got a gold top which is very pretty the original Les Paul color and Lee how much and I've, would got one, a, I've got a natural one how much would you have to spend to get one of these wonderful classic customs by Gibson um, well if I told you that to buy a Les Paul Custom, you would pay £2,800 at the moment. That's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. How much do you think one of these should be? Um, oh, I actually don't know the answer to this question. I know. So I'm going to go for £1,500. £1,500, so almost half the price of, yeah. a, of a, a Les Paul Custom. <laughs> uh, well, you're wrong. Uh, I'm going to... Because it's actually less than that. Really? Yes, it's oh less than God. that. It is it all is. that money, <laughs> so less money than it should be. Uh, it's exactly half the price of a Les Paul Custom. It's uh, one thousand three hundred and ninety-nine pounds. <laughs> Look at the mess you. And then this is all going to start to. Melt. You know, when I was uh, when I was a young lad a couple of years ago, 
And uh, I went to a guitar shop. Uh, it was the first time I was really looking at guitars, and I saw a Les Paul, and it didn't have the scratch plate on. And there was a hole here, and there was a hole here. And I said, why are there, why are there holes on the body? What's going on? Well, what happened is a woodworm went in there, and it came out there, and I believed him. <laughs> because I am monumentally naive. God bless me for it. Let's talk about baked maple. There's quite a lot of guitars that uh, Gibson are now going to produce with the baked maple fretboards. So again? Exactly. There's quite a lot of guitars that Gibson are going to now produce with a baked, baked maple, maple fret fretboard. And um, I suspect everybody will be saying, are they using baked <coughs> maple because it's better than rosewood? Or are they using baked maple because they just can't get rosewood? It's, well, you know, it's a poor substitute. Can I substitute. put a vote in and can I say that I much prefer this to rosewood? Well, what we're going to do is we've got a Les Paul traditional here, which is same pickups, same construction, you know, uh, mahogany back with a, a maple cap, um, but with a rosewood fretboard. Bit of contraband. <laughs> Just going to literally have a whiz around these basic guitars here, and then I'm going to bring the Les Paul traditional, in, and you can. Uh, we'll just do some completely <coughs> straight A B tests. Yeah. Um, we'll play an A to B. Yeah. Or in terms good. of feel, <laughs> they feel great. They're really, really great Les Pauls. I definitely, when I first picked this up, and I was just playing, and you guys know I quite like a bit of vibrato, and it's definitely got a more maple kind of feel. Uh, Surprisingly, it's a bit, that. It's yeah, even though it's <coughs> maple. Um, it's definitely smoother. It doesn't. Yeah. I mean, my I've got a rosewood board on my strap that took me probably six or seven years before I really felt it was smooth. Yeah. Um, a lot of rosewood boards I find, you know, until you know, straight away from day one, you know, have got a little bit of resistance on them when mm. you're you're playing. I because I'm really light to the touch when I play. I never really touch the board, but what you you can definitely perceive a tonal difference. It's snappier. It's yes. got a brighter feel to it. It isn't just semantics, it really does feel brighter and snappier. And yeah, I like it. I prefer it to Rosewood a great deal. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, again, tone wise, why, we'll see. Is on it that. complements the whole point of it being a big, dark, fat guitar? You know what I mean? It's got that heavy yeah. body, thick sounding. It's like having a maple cap on it, you know, just to say. I, I definitely, I would definitely say that the, the feel of it is is nice. We'll find out on the tone. I mean, obviously, we've got a we've got a traditional that we can we can find out. Feel wise, I do I do quite like it. It kind of feels maybe is it ebony esque? Kind I don't of, know. You know. Say, are they? Is it verging on ebony? It's a little bit ebony esque because it's hard, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Lee, tell me about baked maple. Okay. Uh, Gibson aren't the first guys to use uh, baked maple on their fretboards. Uh, John Sir, Sir Guitars has been doing it for many, many years. So this is this is not Gibson just sort of um, trying to just use any old alternative to rosewood. It's a very, very viable fretboard alternative. Um, you take a standard piece of maple, um, a piece of maple that you would use for a fretboard. You then bake it to uh, 200 degrees Celsius or Gas Mark V, Get or whatever the, <laughs> and um, <laughs> that process, uh, you then reintroduce the moisture to the fretboard under, under pressure, under very high pressure, and the board comes out essentially uh, dark, um, and because it's been baked, any movement that might be left in perhaps a, a non-baked maple board uh, is gone. So it's a very, very ideal wood to make a fretboard from because it can't move. So, you, you know, there'd be no, you're not going to get any problems with frets, maybe, you know, shrinkage on the fretboard or anything I like that. I wonder how they worked that out. Oh, let's bake the wood and make it better. Yeah, I don't like, know. Who does that? So here's the bridge humbucker. <laughs>
Here's the neck. Even with no gain, no nothing, just <laughs> the lovely. <laughs> Here's the middle position. <laughs> It's lovely. Yeah. So play us some classic uh, lead tones. <coughs> if you push the button once, it's sort of crunchy. I if thought you push it I twice. thought you'd never ask. <laughs> Fish and chips, isn't it? Marshall and Gibson, or other things that go well together. Yeah. Well together. And then I guess Didario is like the tartar sauce, <laughs> and then like the pickled egg is like your your Planet Waves platform. Oh. <coughs> same thing, different guitar, different amp. Different, yeah, same guitar. Well, we don't have to do this, but we can do it if you I want. I think we to. should do. All right then. This well, is. It's the... a really nice amplifier, isn't it? Yeah, I've got a Fender Supersonic kit. <laughs> This is my rhythm pickup. It's my treble pickup. Or both in between. Uh, and this is a supersonic amplifier, which means it's got a bit of dirt. So. So we like, we yeah, do like this. Yeah, we really like, yeah. But I know what you guys want to know. You want to know how different does baked maple sound compared Taste. to rosewood. So what I'm going to do is Pablo here is going to hand me, look, we'll see if we can do this so it's just like, like they do on the TV. Seamless. Here's what we prepared earlier. <laughs> um, so <coughs> this is a, a Les Paul traditional. Been around in the Gibson catalog for about three years now. Um, it's essentially a Les Paul like you love and know it. Same pickups? Um, yes, we picked this one rather than the, the standard uh, because uh, Pablo reliably informs me, it's all his fault if I'm wrong, that these aren't uh, burst buckers in here, these are classic 57s. So it should be the same pickup as we've got in the Custom Classic, or the Classic Custom. Classic which Custom. Which is it, I never remember. <laughs> um, so we're just going to put a clean tone, really simple, one open chord maybe, yeah. A, B, and then we'll take a look on the computer at the difference in the waveform spectrograph. Tastic. And we'll do it all on this Marshall amplifier rather than on the Fender one. Yes. Uh, 
So this is it. This is a Les Paul Traditional with a rosewood board through a Marshall DSL-40 tube amplifier. This is the definitive test to see if there is a yeah. difference tonally. Both guitars are fresh out their cases, so the strings should be brand new. We've tuned them to E-flat, because uh, that is the uh, tuning of the people, according Tune to, to Rob. People. Um, and uh, we're just going to play really straight, open chords, exactly the same settings, so that you can try and hear uh, or hopefully not try and hear, you will hear the difference between a baked maple fretboard on this guitar, are we going to use this one? Yeah. Yes. And a rosewood fretboard on this guitar. Stop playing. <laughs> it won't stop playing. <laughs> well, and there it is. Well, that's pretty. I mean, that's re in the room. That's really, really, really obvious. Yeah, I mean, this it's is monumentally brighter. Is it? Well, it's it's a lot bright. I mean, I tell you what. Just do the. Just go treble pick up on this, yeah. and then straight back to treble pick up on that. And I think we'll, that was we'll where cut it to it, so it's really yeah. immediate. Ready? So we go. This is a darker guitar for sure and it has to be the rosewood fretboard there's yep, nothing else there's I mean, nothing else there's different. nothing i mean i suppose there's lacquer on the back of the neck too well th this is a chambered body that's a solid body oh so yeah solid we, body gonna get that, darker tones, that might you? be why this is maybe a bit more resonant but it shouldn't affect the brightness of it I yeah. think the brightness is just the, the fretboard so there you go <laughs> 